According to Xcar's internet experts, I've got about 20 seconds to get your attention before you click that little red X up there somewhere. So I'll keep it snappy. This is not just a review of the 2015 model Volkswagen Beetle Sport. No, this is a story of perhaps the biggest piece of industrial espionage the automotive world has ever seen. Still watching? So this is the latest version of the Volkswagen Beetle. This model was launched in 2011. This particular one is the 1.4 TSI Sport. It has about 160 bhp and a few sporty extras. Now, it's a fairly fashionable car. And if I sound a bit underwhelmed, it's because I'm not a particularly fashionable bloke. This really got me thinking about what is the Beetle? Where does it come from and what's in its DNA? What makes it special? I was a bit surprised to learn that Volkswagen build 19 different models off of this same A5 platform, everything from the Skoda Yeti to the Audi TT and the Volkswagen Golf and everything else in between. So what's unique about it? What's special? Well, if you look into Volkswagen's history, you'll discover that the Beetle isn't quite as unique as you might think. Let's have this bit in black and white, please. So a little history lesson. In a resurgent Germany in the 1930s, Adolf Hitler commissioned a young Ferdinand Porsche to build a car for the masses. That car was the Volkswagen Beetle. It could be paid for by a special savings scheme whereby the, the masses could save up with their stamps and get a car, their very first car. That was pretty innovative. So that's the story of my nice new Beetle's ancestor. But some people think that some of Porsche's early Beetle design work wasn't all his own, that he was, well, perhaps looking over somebody's shoulder. Tata was a Czech company formed in the late 1800s. They quickly developed a great reputation for building cars of technical excellence and superb quality. They were very robust. One of their engineers was a chap called Hans Led Vinker. He was an early proponent of streamlining and air-cooled engines and also chassis development. However, if you park a Tatra next to a very early Beetle, you might be forgiven for thinking that one was a copy of the other. They're remarkably similar. Let's meet a chap that knows more than most about this murky story. Ivan, I've got a drawing to look at. Right. Because to me, you are Mr. Tatra. Well, and you're probably far too modest to admit that. A little bit of knowledge. This is beautiful. This is a drawing of the Type 2 Volkswagen Beetle. But what fascinates me here are the technical similarities now between the car that we're looking at, your, your beautiful car, and this beetle. I mean, there was an economic um, crisis in the 30s, as everyone knows, and uh, um, most manufacturers were looking for smaller cars to buy because they were easier to sell um, rather than the big luxurious models. A lot of manufacturers went into a smaller car production, as well as Tatra in those days, which started in 1921 with little cars. And so in those days we find similarities in design in most European manufacturers because they're all close together. What's fascinating for me though is to take this design and there are a number of quite striking similarities and obviously this has been quite an interesting topic for discussion amongst automotive historians. But the obvious ones are obviously the, the shape and the fact that we've got an air-cooled engine in the back. This model here, this T600 even has a two-piece split screen as well because obviously glass was quite expensive to manufacture in curved shapes back then. What else do we have in here that's similar to the T600 that you have? Well, uh, the streamlining was incredibly important because uh, the fuel consumption had to be reduced, the car had to go faster. But one of the main features, which was then a, a patent problem between the two companies, was the backbone chassis which um, Volkswagen used as well, having the backbone along there, which um, Tatra uh, had the innovation of splitting into a sort of fork end at, at the back to accept the rear engine. What was the key difference commercially though between, for example, uh, Volkswagen at the time and Tatra? Because Tatra, as I understood it, uh, particularly in later models, were quite luxurious. They were quite uh, thoroughly developed cars and they were driven by the sort of the communist hierarchy because they were quite a prestigious prestigious mark, whereas the Beetle is obviously famous for being cheap transport for everybody, it's the people's car. The early Tatras, were they pitched at the ordinary public or were they something special? In the um, beginning of the 30s, Tatra uh, saw other people like Maybach uh, starting to manufacture large cars, but because of the economic crisis that sort of slowed down mm. and there was a sort of gap of about five years before they sort of started again. 
So they started uh, making streamlined cars with V8 engines at the back. And just before the war in 1936-37, they started to develop a smaller model, uh, which was the Model T97, uh, with a flat four cylinder engine. That was a sort of similar size car to the Volkswagen, which was being made at the same time, or being designed at the same time. And that was the model which then, uh, um, on seeing it at the 1939 motor show in Berlin, uh, Hitler and uh, his officials decided, uh, together with Porsche, to stop the manufacture of that model. But by then, uh, Tatra company was, uh, Tatra factory was occupied by the Germans. So it was easy for them to say, this is too much of a competition for our Volkswagen. After the war, obviously, I mean, Volkswagen became, under Major Ivan Hurst, a fabulous success. And the modern Beetle is a beautiful car, and, it, and, you know, Volkswagen is a global concern today. So for me, it's quite remarkable that Tatra uh, continued to build beautiful cars. And this is an absolutely beautiful machine with lots of technical innovations in it. After the war, they had their illegal spat with Volkswagen that, that rumbled on in the background, but also to build such cars under communism where materials were scarce and engineering resources were scarce, I think is, uh, is quite an achievement. I don't think many people will know, certainly not many of our ex-car viewers will know, the history of Tatra, so I hope we give them a good taste. One thing that I particularly love about Tatra is not so much the design but the marketing because that was innovative too. They produced a, a short film called Happy Journey which you can find on YouTube. Now of course all manufacturers make short adverts is essentially what they are but it showcases uh, the robust design and the lively handling of the car but they do that by taking a middle class couple and getting into a chase with the police and driving through rivers and rolling, rolling down snowy banks. It's quite crazy to think of a manufacturer uh, you know, showcasing their technology by essentially breaking the law and enjoying it. This is another reason I love Tatra. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a very famous film and fantastic to, to see so well worth uh, finding out about yeah. it. Well, um, this is yours, if you just want to tell me, I mean, how long have you owned it? I bought the car about 2000, uh, and it was restored in the Czech Republic by um, a friend, uh, in a way, and he was just one man show, he doesn't want to share his work with anyone, so it took him a long time, about uh, seven, eight years okay. of hard labour, but it was worth the wait. I think this is the point normally where I jump in and wang around and show off and do skids and stuff, but this took seven years to restore. There are two on the roads in the UK. I think you better drive it. I think it's sad that Tatra no longer make cars today. And of course, Volkswagen is a colossal global concern. The new Beetle is a great car. The whole thing is a success and deservedly so. But it's well worth remembering what Ferdinand Porsche said about Ludvinka. Sometimes he looked over my shoulder and sometimes I looked over his. Or was it Ludvinka who said that about Porsche? I'm not sure we will ever know.